Puffsy Rosie. <laughs> so what I was getting was, um, were you ignoring me intentionally over the last 10 minutes on tape? Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. We already talked about this. You said, I just had to tell you that one time, then you weren't going to do that anymore, but you continued to do it. So No, no, no. But it has nothing to do with, it, it had to do with changing a topic. Oh, I got it. I'm good. Okay, good. Thank God. Hey, all right, let's... I feel like you've been talking like all sorts of smack about me already this morning, that you're giving that vibe off right now. Oh, yeah, I was. I said that um, what happened was because you had to back out because the Wi-Fi was bad. I said the Wi-Fi got <laughs> – stop trying to distract me. The Wi-Fi got stopped at the security gate and wouldn't get let in today. That's right. Don't be trying to get in this dang neighborhood. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So let's start with the big two-game series that wrapped up. Uh, Astros and Dodgers split it in a game apiece. Max Scherzer, his Dodger debut was simply fantastic. 10 Ks, two runs. Seven innings of work, got a little dicey there in the ninth, thanks to Kenley, but the Dodgers hang on for the 7-5 to five win. In your opinion, over the final two months of the season, is Scherzer the most important player, not pickup, but overall player among the three National League West contenders? Uh, no. Andrew! Excuse bless, me. Bless you. I don't think he is. You know, obviously he's very important, and there's a ton of very important players, and he would looks spectacular last night i think we said I, I yesterday i said six innings two earned runs he, I, best of that went seven innings two earned mm -hmm. runs uh but i think the most important player is Fernando tatis jr and if he can come back and actually play He's resting right now i haven't heard any updates i think they're going to give him 10 days and then decide if he needed surgery mm-hmm he's the guy i mean if he's not there san diego has a big hole to fill and you know, maybe loses the grasp on that second wild card. So I think he's the most important guy. Uh, but obviously Scherzer means uh, a ton to the Dodgers, and he showed why last night. Okay, as far as the actually winning the division, I would agree with you for Tatis in terms of just making the playoffs. But if we're just talking strictly about being the one seed and winning that NL West, it's not Tatis because I don't think that they can get there. I almost went with Mookie Betts and his return to health, and we saw what he did, a right? home ring in his first two play appearances last night. But I'm going to go with the guy who actually picked up the win for the San Francisco Giants last night. It was Kevin Gossman, who went okay. that, who went on the paternity list today. So best of luck to he and his wife as they're welcoming in their, their second child to this wonderful world. Uh, Gossman last night, one run, six innings, eight Ks. Not an amazing performance, but really good for him based on where he's been the month of July, over a five ERA in his previous three starts, 11 earned runs and 11 and two thirds, nine walks in those three starts, none last night. He needs to get back to being Kevin Gossman because if the Giants have a true top of the rotation guy, which he was this first half of the year and was very much in the Cy Young discussion, even when Jacob DeGrom was healthy, they're going to be in good shape particularly now that the Dodgers have added a guy like Max Scherzer to the fold. So I think Gossman becomes very important down the stretch. I like it. I like it. They need him to be the guy he has been most of the season. All right, real quickly, uh, any problem with with the Correa antics in the ninth inning with doing this when he was round third and anything no, like that? Not at all. I mean, dude, or it wasn't you're, ninth getting, inning, but yeah. you're getting booed like that, like as yeah. much as they've been booed. He's kind of leaned into the whole heel thing. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's, if I was the Dodgers fans, I'd stop booing Correa because he likes it, you know, but I'd have no problem with it, man. Go for it. I like it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. I like it. I love the theater. I love the dramatics. You don't have to like Carlos Correa. Dude is a damn good player, man. He And, and when those lights are on, he shines. You've been around enough guys where they tend to get a little <laughs> like this. No, he, he likes does not. Well, the whole, their whole team is because they're battle-tested. I mean, yeah. they've been through everything, highs, lows. They've won a World Series. They've been knocked out in the playoffs. I mean, they've mm -hmm. been through it all. So uh, they're, they're a special team, man. Yeah. And by the way, there was a little bit of me that wanted to see um, Kenley face Altuve. Well. High game at stake. I mean, obviously me too, but he's already, what, he had, he had four Ks last night. Wasn't really feeling it, but. I know. Kenley, man, Kenley's getting dicey in the back end. I know, you know, I have a lot of Dodger uh, fans for friends. A lot of my friends are Dodger fans. Mm -hmm. the, the back end of the bullpen has just always been an issue here for, the, for a long time. Even, yep. I know Kenley's been really good, but even if it wasn't Kenley, it was someone else, like Pedro Baez or whatever. So it's, if you're a Dodger fan, you understand the feeling. Uh, I think 
I think this won't be the last time we talk about that Dodger pen over the last two yeah. months of the season. All right. Have you noticed who's got the best record in baseball since the 4th of July? I have. The New York Yankees. And Anthony Rizzo continues to make his mark. He became just the fourth player ever to have an RBI in each of his first six games with his new team. And everybody in the Twitterverse is like, we got to sign Rizzo right now, right now. Should Yankee fans slow their roll for just a second? Or do you think that that's actually something the Yankees should look into? Oh, they for sure should look into it. I mean, Rizzo fits their team extremely well. Uh, they don't necessarily – I mean, they have Luke Voigt. Okay, now if you think – if they think Luke Voigt's the answer at first base, I think those guys are about the same age. Uh-huh. Um, then maybe you let Rizzo go. But I think bringing him back is the smart move. You know, he's turning 32 soon, but he's a guy that he, – he's going to play, and he's going to hit, and he's going to perform. I mean, age for him, I feel like he could play till he's 38. You know, like he's – that his game doesn't like his game doesn't need speed. It doesn't need anything like that. He can pick it at first base and give you professional at bat. So, I mean, the Yankees go off for him a four year deal this off season. What's wrong with that? I mean, you, you have a guy like that at first base anchoring down the lineup too. I think it's a smart move. Would you do it right now? Like people are saying right now before he gets the free agency. If it, I mean, yeah, if it comes at a discount, it all depends on what they believe discount. for Luke Voigt. Yeah, if you, oh, if you do it right now. What sort of discount is Anthony Rizzo going to give? Because I guarantee you he wanted to stay in Chicago, and the numbers just didn't work for him. I'm sure that's what happened. Well, he now he's in New York, and maybe he likes it there, and you're the only team that can negotiate with him right now. That's the discount part. When you, Once he gets to the open market and he gets to talk to every single organization – Mm-hmm. then, you know, it becomes a bidding war. But right now the Yankees have the – they're the only team that can negotiate with him. So I'm not saying it's like a, a hometown discount, obviously, but if they if he likes it there, maybe they they get him at a weak moment. He's like, damn, I want to play in New York. Screw it, four years, whatever. Uh, I don't think it's a bad idea to talk to him about it. I know Cashman said basically like they're not – he hasn't ruled it out, but he said the deal was strictly for this year. I don't even know what he was talking about. But I would talk to him right now. I was good fit. It's, not, it's not like he's some I, aging, crappy ball no. player. The guy is still – I mean, I don't know if he's in his prime, but he's still performing at a very, very elite level. And by the way, I don't think Anthony Rizzo signs before he hits free agency. I, think he I don't think so either. Did. I think if you were to ask Anthony Rizzo, have you been underpaid the last several years, he would say yes. He should. He should go get the whole tour. He should go to Chicago, back to Chicago and say, what do you guys right. going to do for me? He should go to New York and say, what do you guys do for me? He should yep. go to L.A. and say, I mean, I don't know about Dodgers, but everywhere. Just go get, take the tour, Anthony. Go I'll tell you one other place you should look. San Francisco. I think Brandon Belt's a free agent after this year. No hitters yeah. want to go there. Come on. He's not going to. I'm, really? I'm being serious, man. It's cold. It's, it's, that's not an easy place to hit. Plus, you got to face – there's a lot of good pitching in that division. He probably wants to be on an AL team, if I had to guess. Okay. Boston? Yeah. Sure. That'd be I think the Yankees have a good chance. I think if they go on some sort of run here and he performs well, I think the Yankees have a good chance. He has performed well. He's hit six homers in his last ten games overall. All right, bigger story to come out of Anaheim yesterday. Shohei Otani, I guess technically that part was in Arlington. Another six innings, gave up one run, ERA under three, continues to have over 1,000 OPS, or Anthony Rendon's season – ends early, he's going to have hip surgery. I mean, it's sad for Rendon. You send all your best wishes. I think the bigger story is what Otani is doing. You know, we talk about him so much, but every time I watch him, it, it looks like Otani on a major league baseball field, he, he looks like a kid that's like better than everybody. You know, like you watch a little league game, there's mm-hmm. like one kid like, oh, that's, that's the kid. That guy's a stud. Like, Otani looks so comfortable doing everything on the mound, base running, hitting. It's really, like, it's just so impressive to see. So now he's got his ERA under a three. He's got his OPS over a fucking one daughter, Chris. Amazing. Like, what we're seeing is, like, you just – I know we're we're living it right now, and we do talk about it a lot, but I, don't, I, I still don't think we can comprehend what it means as far as, like, baseball history. Oh, no, I, I told you this. It, there was a streak where we were talking about him every day on this show. 
and I still said it wasn't enough. So yeah. he's the one guy where my 15-year-old Brady, he and I, we stop and do whatever we can to get to our phones or we're somewhere in the house. We put up an Otani at bat or when he's pitching, the world stops. So yeah. that's just the way it is. The Rendon thing would scare me a little bit if I were an Angels fan. I'm just coming off, I think, because you're just coming off the huge pool holes contract coming off the books this year, right? And you're like, okay, we can hit the reset button. Now you got a guy who's going to be heading into year three of a $245 million deal. Hip surgery is not like a layup here. No, it's not. So, and the guy's going to turn 32 next summer. And we have always heard that Anthony Rendon is really good at baseball. He might not love baseball the way that everybody loves baseball. So you just don't know how it's going to go. I would be worried a little bit if I were an Angels fan. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know Anthony that well, so I can't speak on his personality and what drives him. But you're right, man. Like, coming back from a surgery like that, there's so much rehab that has to be done. It's hard work. And, like, as he gets older, he's going to have to work harder and harder to maintain his body, mm-hmm. or even just to get ready to play the game. So I have heard those stories, like, he doesn't love the game. And I know plenty of baseball players who feel the exact same way. Like, you've been playing the game for so damn long by this point. 32 years old, he probably started playing when he was four years old, Chris. He's known nothing but baseball this entire right. time. It wears on you. Eventually, I don't care what kind of level you're playing at, superstar level, like you, you get, you can get sick of the game. You know, you can want to do something else. Like it's your life. And uh, I'm not saying he's like that, but it's just going to be, it's a lot of work, man. And it's going to continue to be harder and harder for him. But I wish him all the best. I want him to perform totally. at a high level. He's so fun to watch. In 2019, there were a few guys you would rather watch hit baseball than Anthony Rendon. It it was that simple. I mean, his career OPS is 854, 712 this year. Something was wrong. Hopefully he's able to hit the reset button, come back, and fight through that injury because that ain't going to be easy. Yeah. All right, let's move on. George Springer, triple shy of the cycle last night. Jays three out in the wild card chase. Serious playoff contender, or do you still need a little more time to marinate on this club? Serious playoff contender, Chris, and I'll tell you why. I haven't really been on the Blue Jays. I've been super high on the Blue Jays all year, but they've done a few things or, like, have had a few things happen to put them in this position. We knew their offense was going to be really, really good. Uh, Vladdy has taken it to a completely different level. No one expected him to do what he's doing now. Uh, So he's crushing it. My problem was the rotation. You know, Uh they had Ryu. Uh, they brought in Robbie Ray, which was kind of a head scratcher at the beginning of the year. That looks like an incredible deal for them. So they have Ryu, they have Robbie Ray performing at a high level. They found Manoa, or he they brought him up. He's looked really good. And then you trade for Barrios. Now you got four guys that are damn good in that rotation. Uh-huh. Bullpen still, you know, a work in progress. But you know, if they can figure something out, maybe move one of those guys to the pen, figure out how to handle the bullpen. They're absolutely playoff contenders with that lineup and that starting staff. I am buying. You mentioned the change in the starting rotation. The bullpen, I criticized them probably 10 days ago on this show, and people were like, hey, we traded for Simber and Richards, and they've both been really good. And I'll give that to you guys. They both have been. The Brad Hand trade, I like it in theory. I don't I, – I've watched Brad Hand an awful lot over the last few years. He is struggling right now. Mm-hmm. He's not a guy I trust with a one-run lead. It's that simple. The name to watch down the stretch is Nate Pearson, right? Yep. Big time prospect has had health trouble ever since he's come up. They're going to get him back. They're going to put him in the bullpen. You have that fire breathing dragon. I get it. It's not the role he's used to. He's a starting pitcher. I don't care. Guy could come out of there and change a game. Change it. And they might not even like the way their offense can score runs. They might not even need. No, you need somebody. I, I know that, but I'm saying they could out-hit a team for a series. They could just go in and absolutely beat your brains in with their bats. So that's a, that's gruesome what I just said right there. Jeez. Yeah, it is. It's a little nasty what you but said. But it's true. These guys it mash, true. dude. So I think that's their path is score a bunch of runs and have your starters hold the team down and then hold on for dear life. I think that's right. the formula. Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, yeah, they – They've had a few things happen, and then they made some moves, and here they are, man. They're right there. So I I can't wait because you've got the Rays and or Red Sox, whoever's not winning that division. 
You've got the A's. The Mariners are still sticking in there. I don't they know are. how, but congrats to you. The Blue Jays, they're all there for the final two months, and that's going to make it so much fun to watch. Love it. It's great. I got a, la a great last topic coming your way, but first I want to remind you that today's Instagram Live is presented to you by our friends at Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, use the code word ROSE, you get 20% off and free shipping and handling. Now here's the deal. They're on to the brand new Lawn Mower 4.0. I've used it. It's great. It cleans up your business. That special someone in your life is going to be like, thank you so much. It's awesome. So it's got the dual head, 360 degrees, 9,000 RPM motor. It doesn't yank, doesn't pull you out. Like, damn, that hurt. That does not happen here. Plus, it's waterproof. You want to take it in the shower? That's your business. Go for it. They'll take care of you there. In addition to that, you got the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. I tell you this every day. I got massive problems with that. You can't see it. Why? Because of Manscaped. Uh, they've also got the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, plus two free gifts, the Performance Boxer Briefs, which Michelle Rose loves. You can ask her about it Saturday when we all go out. We don't. <laughs> and then the Shed Travel Bag as well. So once again, it's manscaped.com. Keyword is Rose. You get 20% off your order, plus free shipping and handling. It's nice. That's a nice discount, 20%. It's real Hell deal. yes, it is. And everybody needs, you need to trim it up. You need this. Come on, man. It's 2021. Let's get on board. Uh, last thing. Baseball came out with the uniforms that the Yankees and White Sox are going to be wearing one week from today at the Field of Dreams game in Iowa. Yay or nay on the uniforms? I like them. They look like they belong in a cornfield in Iowa. Like, they fit. Okay. I don't I, know. I mean. I love the White Sox. Yeah. Because – you know, that's like what Ray Liotta wore in the movie. Sure. Like, I don't know how comfortable it's going to be for the players, particularly if it's like 92 and humid. But Are they like old wool or are they like the new Nike fabric? They got to be the new Nike fabric. So the Yankees are because they've got the big swoosh on them. Like those – I wanted them to go old wool just for one game. <laughs> no, you – well, you're a plate and that's horrible, dude. Uh, they look horrible. I know. I've seen them. I've seen them. I actually had the chance of seeing um, – I got a special tour at the Hall of Fame a few years ago when Brady played in Cooperstown, and we got taken down to the awesome part of the, mm -hmm. of the Hall of Fame. And I got to see Babe Ruth's uniform. That's awesome. And it – The big? Yeah, it's big. How big is Babe Ruth? He's not that – he wasn't even that big. I bet I could beat no. Babe Ruth. It was big in the belly. Plenty of room. I would smack Babe Ruth around. Stop. What do you – really? <laughs> Go ahead. Finish your story. Are you Adam, are you Adam Adamino? I'm just saying, I, you know, they make him out to be this mythical figure and how big he was, but – Yeah. He's All right. Um, God, Michelle's going to get a coffee, and she's asking me right now if I want one. I want one, but I don't want to make you disappear. I I'll, I'll, let me handle this show. Tech, go ahead. Get, your, get Michelle – Okay, Text her and say I love her, too. You, stop it. Please, this is getting weird. Um, tell me what you got coming up on John Boy, and I'm going to tell her I want a coffee. Coming out. Oh, actually, baseball schedule. Recording it later today, so that'll be a little bit different. Um, but we'll have fun with it. And that's it. What do you got? Yeah, why are you doing it later today? They have a – I don't know if they've announced it or not, but they're doing something pretty cool tomorrow. Oh. Uh, in New York, Great. on the radio, oh, big time! Excellent, I love yeah. hearing that. Uh, okay, so the latest episode of the Rose Rotation is dropped. It's where I'm wearing my Reds hat. Jonathan India, their fine young yeah. second baseman, really good personality. Looks like Johnny Depp from one of the Pirates flicks. Um, he's really, really talented. He's funny. He's a deep thinker. He talks about his relationship with Joey Votto. That's a clip we already put out. He played with Pete Alonso at Florida. Some great stories about the polar bear down there. An amazing story about his teammate, Jesse Winker, who we saw throw the ball, you know, to the fan in New York over the weekend. Just a, And by the way, his dad, holy shit. You know, like when you were younger and you were like, yeah, my dad can beat up your dad. Remember that? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Seriously, you, you don't remember doing that sort of stuff like Not when you were a little kid? Uh, 
Go on. Yeah. His dad could beat up everybody's dad. Probably right. at the same time. Fighter? Weightlifter extraordinaire. Guy looked like he, he would eat 45-pound plates for breakfast. I'll smack him around, too. Just kidding. I'm kidding, nope. everybody. Jeez. No. No. No, I'm going to take kidding. Mr. Indy. I'm feeling myself. I had a good workout. I'm feeling myself today. You did not get a workout in? I did. Oh. Big one. Okay. I went Just kidding, Mr. Before. India. You would probably beat me up. Stop. Ah. All right, so we're back. Uh, we're back on this train again on Friday, right? Yes, yes. I got a big night tonight. See how I look in the morning. Might be a little bags under these eyes. Really? Why? Oh, uh, we have a little barbecue in our neighborhood tonight, and uh, Olivia, my wife, is hosting it. So, oh. you know, I'm amped up. We're gonna have fun. Great. Save some room for dinner on Saturday. We got to cancel one of the reservations still. So we got to. You and I have to chat off. We'll chat. We'll chat. We'll chat. Okay. All right. Have a good talk in baseball later today. Love All you, right. man. Yeah, you too. Enjoy your day. Love you. Enjoy your coffee. You're very sweet. Very and, sweet. Uh, I'll text you after this. We'll figure out dinner, okay? Let's do it. Everybody have a great baseball Thursday. Peace.